Hi, my name is Bruno Silva. I'm a dentist at uh, the Brighton Implant Clinic and today we're talking about wisdom tooth extractions. So this is something that uh, we commonly uh, carry out as dentists here at the clinic and there are reasons why wisdom tooth extractions are problematic and why they need to be removed um, in some cases and we're going to talk just briefly about what the procedure involves um, if you're thinking or needing to have this procedure done there are a few things that you should be aware of. So generally in the simplest uh, type of wisdom teeth um, they may have enough room in your mouth the upper and the lower and they can actually erupt um, into your mouth or they can actually grow into your mouth without um, any complications there's enough space they vertically grow up but in many cases our mouths are just not sufficiently big enough or there isn't enough room for these teeth to actually grow into your mouth uh, fully so uh, they may be partially erupted in which case um, you've actually got the tooth like kind of half uh, protruding through the gum at the very back in the upper or lower and um, this can be a situation where the tooth just stays in that position and doesn't cause any problems um, bearing in mind the wisdom teeth generally they grow or they become um, visible from about 18 years onwards um, they usually erupt between 18 and uh, 21 22 years old um, if your wisdom tooth is partially erupted it might not give you any symptoms might be totally okay it's important to brush the area keep the area clean to prevent any infections developing around the wisdom tooth but quite often um, the gum around the wisdom tooth it's a little bit less kind of rugged or, or tough compared to the gum tissue that we have around other teeth and what tends to happen is food debris can um, accumulate or can get lodged or wedged between the gum and the tooth and this causes a gum infection uh, which is called pericoronitis and it can cause several symptoms it can give you like discomfort pain it can limit how much your jaw opens so it can be really quite uncomfortable so if you have a partially erupted wisdom tooth the actual treatment for removing that on the first case would be maybe just uh, improve oral hygiene um, you might need some antibiotics to treat the infection however if this becomes persistent and it continues uh, causing problems then your dentist may recommend actually having the tooth removed uh, removing the tooth a partially erupted wisdom tooth it can be done under local anesthetic or if you opt you could be sedated that might be something that you would prefer if you're anxious about treatment or you just don't want to be awake when the treatment's been carried out but it can be done under local anesthetic now moving on to kind of more difficult cases and we're going to show a case uh, just on the x-ray behind me you may find that uh, the wisdom tooth has so little space and instead of it growing vertically up it's actually growing kind of at an angle and this means that the teeth just uh, directly adjacent to the wisdom tooth they're just basically preventing that tooth from growing and that's what we call like an impacted wisdom tooth there are different types of impacted wisdom teeth they can be like more difficult type of impactions than other but generally that surgery is a little bit more difficult than for example a partially erupted wisdom tooth okay all the descriptions I've been explaining are kind of more associated with lower wisdom teeth although upper wisdom teeth can also they can also be impacted generally the lower wisdom teeth are the ones that are generally more problematic so um, with a wisdom teeth that are impacted generally you would need a more kind of uh, a more complex surgery um, your dentist or oral surgeon will be able to advise you as to the best way to have this treatment again it can be carried out under local anesthetic although most patients prefer to be sedated for this the treatment takes about an hour and usually afterwards you will need some some instructions as to how to look after the area to make sure that it heals well follow the instructions that the dentist has provided for example making sure that you bite onto the gauze that your dentist might leave you after surgery to make sure that the bleeding stops very often we'll place uh, sutures or stitches to basically close the wound to help that area heal faster and um, just making sure that we keep that area clean is very important one thing that's crucially important is to avoid smoking and avoid drinking alcohol because both of those can cause the wound 
area to not heal and if that were to happen then it basically the the wound gets infected you can have something called a dry socket and it's very painful very very uncomfortable after having the surgery done you will probably find that you will have some swelling you can have bruising and usually that gets worse up until the third day and then after the third day generally you find that the swelling starts to subside the pain improves and seven days to ten days afterwards you should be you know back to kind of normal function kind of feeling normal in the area where the the tooth was removed if you're looking for any more information or have any questions about wisdom teeth removal uh, my name is bruno silva i do provide this treatment here at the brighton implant clinic and uh, please post any questions or send us an email uh, we do provide free assessments for our patients that need this kind of treatment so yeah, hope to see you again soon and thank you for listening. Cheers.